Well, kia ora, good evening. We have, if you have just joined us, we have broken into normal programming to bring you the news the country has been waiting to hear. The decision from New Zealand First on which coalition partner the party has chosen to go with. Well, political editor Patrick Gard joins us now from Parliament. And Patrick, yesterday you told us that there would be an announcement this afternoon. What's happened? Well, Winston Peters has really dragged this out. He has pushed both major parties to the very brink. He has pushed the country to the brink in an act of incredible political brinkmanship. Pushed them to the limits as he has pushed negotiations to the limit. But I can tell you right now, this is the Beehive Theatre It It is ready to go. There will be an announcement. I've been told that Winston Peters is with his MPs right now having a short meeting with them and then he will come here to make the announcement. Now the most significant thing that has happened in the last few minutes is that clapping, clapping has been heard from the Labour officers. Clapping has been heard from the Labour officers. That could mean that there has been an announcement, obviously in the favour in favour of the Labour Party, that Labour uh, have won this. Uh, that Labour have been the ones that Winston Peters has chosen. The other things we know is that Winston Peters has been seen sneaking uh, into Labour Party offices today, the Labour Party offices using a little-known route through Parliament, and also there has been the first there there has there has been the first leak as well, and that has come out of the National Party. It has been a day of waiting, another day of waiting, uh, waiting for Winston Peters. The stage is set at the Beehive Theatre, ready for an announcement. National waiting, Labour waiting, the country waiting. Waiting on Winston Peters to decide who will run New Zealand. Even a platform was delivered, thought to help him look that little bit taller, but it was removed once it was made public. Winston Peters had said the announcement would come in the afternoon. At 1pm, Winston Peters decided to take a lunch break, going to Vietnamese cafe Where's Charlie on Lampton Quay and eating some four soup. He was clearly happy to test Peters, the limits. Uh, you're trying to decide the future of the country, you've taken a lunch break. He was pushing politics to the brink. Can you tell Kiwis that the decision will come this afternoon, Mr Peters? Not by you, Paddy. I won't be telling them anything. Apparently he hadn't eaten all day. It was breakfast. It was actually breakfast. And he implied negotiations were still very much alive. Winston Peters saying that there was new information to consider. We've got to go back and meet again. Yeah. And go through the latest information we have. The calculated delaying tactics saw Bill English call his MPs together to brief them in the morning, even though a deal was nowhere near done. This is a process where uh, you know, further discussion can be had, but I'm satisfied that we're, we're in a position now uh, where I can present to the caucus and to the National Party board the broad outline of, of the agreement. It was a show of force, some political theatre, Bill English making a public case about stability, about what National had to offer. I'm satisfied that the agreements that we've reached with New Zealand First uh, would be able to form the basis of a, a strong and cohesive government. Jacinda Ardern was nowhere to be seen today, a day where Winston Peters kept the country on edge. Well, let's go back now to Bowen House where Lloyd Burr is standing by. And I guess uh, if you were smart, you would put that plinth or the Winston step on tray me, wouldn't you, Lloyd? That's right, exactly. Why wouldn't you? If there's one thing that, that Winston Peters is good at, it is waiting. Uh, he has kept us waiting for 25 days. He's kept us waiting all of today. Yesterday he said that the announcement would be this afternoon. This afternoon is fast running out, um, and so we're all here waiting for him, waiting him, waiting for him to come down one of these elevators. His office is on the 13th floor of this building. He's up there with his MPs having a bit of a chat at the moment, uh, and he is just keeping us waiting. Uh, there's been floods of people come out. Some of them are his staffers, the executive um, assistants of his MPs. So they've flooded out, headed towards the Beehive, which is where that theatre is, which is where he's going to make the announcement. Uh, and we're just waiting for the, the um, elevator clock to tick down from 13 all the way to ground floor where we are. So as soon as it happens, we'll bring it to you. Lloyd, any idea whether he, uh, Winston Peters will come down and deliver that press conference on his own or whether he will come down with New Zealand First MPs? 
Oh, absolutely. He'll, he'll come down, he'll be, he'll be front to centre stage, um, and he'll probably have his MPs behind him as well. They always sort of seem to stand behind him. A bit like bodyguards, really. They, a lot of people do confuse them for bodyguards, but they are actually his MPs. See, he'll come down with his... Uh, the, he'll, they'll also be his advisors as well, so there'll be his MPs, his advisors, uh, probably some of his um, spin doctors, press secs as well, and they'll all make their a ma- massive big train all the way over to um, the Beehive as well. Although, who knows, this is Winston Peters. We've waited for him here before and he's uh, taken a car just across the road to the Beehive as well. So he knows all the tricks. He knows this place uh, like the back of his hand. He's been here forever. Uh, so if anyone knows a sneaky way over the Beehive, it is Winston Peters. <laughs> Lloyd, thank you very much. We'll be back with you shortly. And Lisa, I guess it's a prime example of how in control Winston Peters has been throughout this whole thing. Yeah, I mean, Lloyd mentioned there the amount of time that we've been waiting, but actually we're really impatient. I mean, overseas where you have MMP, it can take three to six months to form a government. So this is is actually not a long period of time, but you're right, he has been in control. He's kept a tight lid on everything. It was what Winston says went, and the other two leaders of the major parties have taken a back seat, obviously not wanting to say anything that would see them out of step with the man who has the power to put them in the Prime Minister's job or back in the Prime Minister's job. And we have talked about uh, whispers that there have been clapping coming from the Labour camp and Jacinda Ardern talking. But in the past, Winston Peters hasn't gone to the leaders of the parties before he's announced the... uh, the government, so we don't actually know yet whether they have been told, do we? Exactly. I mean, you did an interview recently where you um, talked about a book, The Ninth Floor, and we had details from Jim Bolger about how the coalition deal unfolded at the time, and he was very clear. He found out at the same time as the rest of the country did that he was going to be in a coalition with Winston Peters. There was a, a person sent with a letter to inform him of the decision. So you're right, we don't know whether he has told both parties ahead of this announcement exactly where they stand. To be fair, when you're talking of this power play, this is his chance, isn't it? Because once you get into coalition, well then, you know, the opportunity to to make those demands goes away. Well, the other, you know, people have raised concerns, obviously, about wagging the dog. I think we're actually getting, um, we might have some movement down the line. Yeah, we're going to cross now to Patrick Gower, who is outside the Beehive Theatrette, where, of course, this press conference is going to take place. Paddy, what can you tell us about movements there? Yeah, no movement no movement here as yet, but what I can tell you is this uh, has been the most extraordinary day in Parliament for some time, probably a lot different to 1996, where both sides have just not known which way Winston Peters is going to go. Some parliamentary veterans... Uh, telling me it's akin to the 1984 snap election, uh, Norman Kirk's death, or even going so far back as Arnold Normeyer's black budget. Uh, And still we wait, still the drama continues here. Patrick Gow, thank you. Well, we'll bring you more on the coalition talks as soon as any information comes to hand. And as soon as Winston Peters makes a move, we'll tell you. Until then, the rest of the day's news. Welcome back. We've just heard that Winston Peters has issued a one-line statement saying that he will make an announcement at the Beehive Theatrette shortly. So let's go to the Beehive Theatrette. We're standing by is our political editor, Patrick Gower. Paddy. Yes, well, as you can see, the stage is set here. Uh, All of the journalists are here and everyone has been here waiting uh, since long before six o'clock, of course. As we know, the announcement was meant to be this afternoon. This afternoon came and went. Then, of course, Uh, There was this belief that Winston Peters would time it uh, for the news live at 6pm. 6pm has come and gone. We were told that he would be here shortly after 6pm. That has come and gone. And now we have this statement which says uh, literally that he will be here shortly. That's the quote. So we don't know how long until he gets over here. Now, there was also a Facebook post recently from Winston Peters that said he would be going live on Facebook shortly. That led to speculation that he would maybe be making the announcement direct to his supporters and followers on Facebook. However, uh, it's believed to be a live stream from here in the theatre. Now, the rumour mill really has been going crazy. Uh, Earlier on, as I said, reports of clapping uh, coming out of the Labour Party, a clarification on that, that they were actually clapping about Family Feud uh, just before 6 p.m. So uh, not a lot that we can not a lot that we can read into <laughs> read too much into that. But what we do know is that Winston Peters was seen sneaking into the Labour Party headquarters today. That caused a lot of consternation uh, with the National Party that believe he's going that way. We also know 
that the National Party have made the first leak of the negotiations to the National Business Review, saying that they are refusing to give Winston Peters the numbers of ministers they want. That could be significant as well if National is getting worried and has started leaking. We also know that the Green Party is good to go with its special general meeting tonight, a phone call tonight to check with its members uh, whether or not it can go through with a deal. That could mean that Labour have got it. It could also mean that nobody knows anything. Winston Peters has uh, absolutely, uh, which, uh, and uh, the, uh, you might have heard the laughter from the journalist there about nobody not really knowing enough, but it is not really knowing anything actually, uh, because uh, that uh, seems to be uh, the theme at the moment. Um, uh, the only person who knows what's going on here is Winston Peters. It still, mm. still seems to be the case. Very good. Patrick, you know the drill. Let us know if you hear or see anything. <laughs> we will. We will. Lisa, uh, Lisa Owen from The Nation joins us. Lisa, there has actually been whisperings about other people turning up at the Beehive. Yeah, there's a bit of movement at the Beehive. Um, we have heard reports that Mary English is on site at the moment and also that Jacinda Ardern's partner has been there at various points during the day. I think what we're seeing now, this is just indicative of the fact that there is one person in charge. It's Winston Peters. What should we be looking out for when we do hear from him finally, when, you know, he says shortly, so we don't know what that means, yeah. but when we do, what kind of details should we be looking for in whatever deal has been done? Right, well, we've heard murmurings this afternoon about cabinet positions and what he might be hope, hoping for around that, so we would be looking at the detail of that. What position does he get? He has some senior people within New Zealand First, Ron Mark, uh, Tracy Martin, Shane Jones, has he got positions for them as well? And then it's the policy concessions. We'll all be looking at the detail of what he's gained, what he's managed to squeeze out of his potential coalition partner. Thank you, Lisa. And we'll go back to Patrick Gower as soon as anything happens. But in other news, tomorrow, Mark... Welcome back and bear with us. We will bring you sports soon. Uh, Winston Peters allowing. First, we're going to political reporter Lloyd Burr, who is standing outside the lifts in the parliamentary office block Bowen House. That's where New Zealand First is meeting. Lloyd, any movement? Well, there we go. <laughs> no, there's, there's a lot of movement, but it is not Winston Peters. Uh, we have seen two things of significance. One was former Green Party um, MP Stephen Browning came down to the wrong floor and uh, the lift opened, he kind of freaked out, but then he lifted up a bottle of sparkling wine and gave me a thumbs up and then went up. And then following that, uh, two of the Green Party's social media guys, sort of um, communications type people, we had all their tripods and gears and video cameras and they made a beeline for the beehive. So uh, that to me suggests that the Greens are in on this uh, Winston Peters announcement and that seems to me to suggest that it could be a uh, New Zealand first Labour Greens government. But look, that's just speculation, that's just me reading into uh, two things that happened in an elevator here in the Bowen foyer. Uh, the only way we're going to find out is when Winston Peters finally comes down here. I have been messaging his press secretary. She said uh, he won't be long, and I said how long is long, and uh, it has been a long time since she's replied to that. Oh, that might be her then. No, it wasn't. Um, so we're still waiting. Um, surely it will not be long. So we don't quite know what shortly means mm. just yet, but we will bring you that when it happens. Right, now to uh, Andrew uh, Gordy with Sport, the All Blanks in Brisbane. Thanks very much, Maui. Yes, the All Black. And we're going to leave sport there because we understand that Winston Peters is on the move. We are now seeing pictures at Bowen House. There is political reporter Lloyd Burr looking quite disappointed <laughs> that, that that wasn't Winston Peters, but we is, do understand is, he's on his is. way down. Yeah, I've been told that he's on his way leaving Bowen House now. This is Bowen House. These are the elevators in which he's expected to leave in. There is a back door, though, that he could leave, and he has left on that back door many times, uh, jumped in a car and gone across the road. But um, we're just sort of waiting. It's a bit like elevator roulette. Hopefully he's going to come out of one of these. And what's the plan from there, Lloyd? <laughs> Oh, we've got a whole lot of MPs. Hey, guys. Ron do you know which Mark. way you're going? New Zealand First MPs, you clearly. Mark? Do you know which way you're going? Make sure he doesn't fall over. Yeah, oh, mate, I won't. Look out the building. Tracy, you got any words? <laughs> guys, which way is it going to go? They're coming out now. See you over there, eh? Hopefully. Shane Jones, you must have some wide words. Uh, wide the corridor is with the rangatira, mate. Right. This, is this means that Winston right. Peters uh, must be on his way. The next elevator. <laughs> All right, this one's on 13. Okay. All right, so the magic number is 13. Uh, it's also an unlucky number, but this one here is coming down from 13, so it must be Winston Peters here. 
Here we go. Oh, he's done a cheeky stop on, stop on number two. That might mean he's going out the back door. Oh, this is what it's been like all week. Actually, it's been like this for two weeks. Uh, sneaking around Parliament trying to find out which entry and which exit he's going into. He's just gone up to three, up to four. Maybe he's forgotten something. He's forgotten his speech notes or something. That's all we've got. But what we do know is that all his MPs have gone over to the Beehive. They're all getting their front row seats, back row seats, whatever seats they're going to have, because uh, this is a historic moment. This is Winston Peters choosing what kind of government we're going to have for the next three years. Is he going national? Is he going Labour and the Greens? Huge. Lloyd Burr there from Bowen House. So we don't know if Winston Peters has snuck out the back door, as Lloyd alluded to, but we do know that he will end up going to the Beehive Theatre. And Patrick Gower, political editor, Patrick Gower is at the Beehive Theatre waiting for that moment. Paddy, what have you heard there? Well, uh, maybe it would help if I explained to viewers some of the geography of Parliament. Lloyd Burr is actually across the road from where I am. Parliament Buildings actually has an underground travelator that MPs and staff can travel across that goes under a road and way across. So he's actually about six or 700 metres as the crow flies with an underground tunnel. Now, Winston Peters has a number of ways of getting around Parliament. We did say earlier that he had snuck over to Labour, which is actually a lot, lot, lot further away. Um, but he will have to come into here. There is only one way into this theatre yet. It's like a labyrinth Parliament, and Winston Peters um, knows every uh, nook and cranny of this place. Maybe he has snuck it. Maybe he is front... Yeah, Winston Peters is maybe, uh, by the sounds of things, um, moving through some other way uh, to get over here. But he will have to come... Um, through this door, we'll have to come past uh, these photographers, these uh, camera operators, and come in here. This is the way to do it. There's only one way in, only one way into here. Patrick, I've seen uh, the other New Zealand First now. MPs living by the house. Do you, have you seen now? Them? So here they are arriving at the Beehive Theatre. What way is he going to go? What, 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 what way is he, he going to go? Hello, Patty. Yeah. <laughs> where's Winston? Where's, where's Winston? He's not here. OK, okay that, was, that were the, the New Zealand First MPs, nearly all of the MPs except for one. Uh, one is running a little bit, slate, a little bit slow, that's Shane Jones. What, uh, you, you, you last. Uh, but, but, of course, um, one person is missing. Winston Peters was not with those MPs. What you saw there was the uh, entire New Zealand First caucus, Shane Jones, Fletcher Tabato, Clayton Mitchell, Derek Ball, Tracy Martin. They were all there. Now, Winston Peters has still not come with them. That's his MPs. They're in there now, but no sign of Winston Peters. Make of that, make of that what you will. Uh, he, it may be the way that he's trying to come here without being seen by Lloyd Burr and the other cameras over there. Um, but st and we're just seeing pictures now of Winston Peters in the elevator. OK, uh, great. That's Lloyd Burr at Bowen House. So he's on his way. He's got in the lifts. He's in the lifts. And we did hear Shane Jones say the kōrero will come from the rangatira. So they are not talking at the moment, waiting for Winston Peters to have that moment as he makes his way to the Beehive Theatre to make the announcement. So that will be happening shortly. We can see the press gallery waiting there. And... And Let's go back Patrick now to Patrick Gow. Gow. Patrick. Winston, Winston Peters has now arrived uh, to make the decision. Winston Peters is here, moving into the... Winston Peters, what way are you going to go? Winston... Winston Winston Peters wouldn't answer my question. There is now on the stage. Uh, thank you very much for coming along and for being patient and waiting out this uh, event. You may not believe it, but I am truly grateful to you that you've turned up. Uh, let's begin by thanking both the National and Labour parties for the manner in which these negotiations have been conducted and the work that they have put into it. It should be said that during this time, elements of how politics should operate in an MMP environment were seen with great clarity. On 23rd September election day, 
the effect of over 446,000 votes, or 70 per cent of the total, were not known. We believed on election night that those uncounted votes would have a profound effect on the final outcome. That's why New Zealand First waited until October 7 to find out exactly the numbers we were dealing with and what that meant before beginning negotiations with interested parties and bringing this matter to finality as soon as we could in the most responsible time. We started negotiations today after on October 8. We believe that 11 days from start to finish is not too long to wait and stands in stark contrast to the months that it will take the composition of the German government to be known. Germany had an election on the 24th of September, the day after ours. New Zealanders will know the outcome of their election day tonight. The German people will now not know the outcome of their election until December. Now this is a decision made by New Zealand First, and it's their decision, not that of the leader. Every New Zealand First MP and board member is a witness to that. We consult, and that's been our case and our policy for the last 24 years. Now, personally, I have entered into two governmental agreements with Prime Ministers from different parties. We have shaken hands on it, and both those former Prime Ministers have confirmed that as a result of that agreement, I entirely, utterly, totally kept my word. In the last campaign, the Labour Party and the Green Party campaigned as an alternative government. On the question of the numerical construction of that government, New Zealand First was never consulted. But many commentators factored in our support as a given. That enabled the National Party and others in a grouping of four parties to claim that they were facing a group of three parties and where New Zealand First was concerned voters should to quote them, cut out the middleman, end of quotes. Now, whether people like it or not, the strategies of both those alternatives failed. That is why we are in the position we are in now. That said, the decision that is about to be announced does not represent just over 7% of the vote, or 70%, or dare I say it, 45%. This decision represents the majority in an MMP environment, in an MMP parliament. The government I was first a member of, for example, had under 40% of the vote and less than 10,000 than the opposition party got in that election. On the agreement we've reached is a summation of the policies that survived the negotiations. I want to stress that. It is a summation of the policies that survived the negotiations. As the song goes, you can't always get what you want. Our negotiations have taken place against a backdrop of changing international and internal economic circumstances, which we cannot ignore. We in New Zealand First believe that an economic correction or a slowdown is looming, and that the first signs are already here. In the housing market slowdown, in Reserve Bank and Trading Bank's nervousness, in the cessation of hot money from abroad, in property ownership concerns, in receding consumer optimism, and in ebbing retailer confidence. There were great risks in whatever decision we made, and despite our having had no influence on these risks, some will attempt, when the looming dangers come, to heap the blame on us. That those blame caricatures are both spurious and misplaced won't stop attempts to misdescribe the cause of these events. That's why we are putting this scenario out front right now so that such attempts will fail. Awareness of looming consensus has affected our decision. Our choice today relates to how best we mitigate, not worsen, what is coming, we believe, and its impact on as many New Zealanders as is possible. Now, can I say this, as a party New Zealand First believes that it has secured major poli uh, policies to advance the New Zealand economic and social condition. Big or small, all of these policies are important. When we construct the formal agreement summating those matters, we have negotiated, these policies will be published.
It is not my privilege or responsibility to summarise and announce them today. That will be for someone else. Can I just say, far too many New Zealanders have come to view today's capitalism not as their friend but as their foe. And they are not all wrong. That is why we believe that capitalism must, must regain its responsible, its human face. That perception has influenced deeply New Zealand First negotiations. We had a choice to make, whether it was either with national or labour, for a modified status quo or for change. In our negotiations, both national and labour were presented with that opportunity. Working together, cooperating together for New Zealand. That's why in the end we chose a coalition government of New Zealand first with the New Zealand Labour Party. Thank you very much. Any questions? Mr. Peters, um, do you, what, how many portfolios have you got in this new government? Well, it's a sizeable list, but uh, some are big and some are small, and it's up to the Labour leader to announce those when we've completed all our negotiations. And do you think the Greens will be signing off on this when they have their meeting with the delegates tonight? Well, that is not my province either. We entered the negotiations with Labour, knowing that they would handle separately the Greens. Uh, we were always going to be in a coalition government with one party, not more. Uh, and that is an answer that I can't give. It has to be given by somebody else. The experience of Jacinda Ardern is up to the job of being Prime Minister. Do you think? you believe the experience of Jacinda Ardern is up to being Prime Minister? Well, we wouldn't have made the decision if we didn't. What, what qualities do you believe she'll bring to the job? Well, I think, uh, amongst other things, she exhibited extraordinary talent in the campaign itself from a very hopeless position. Uh, to a position where they are uh, in the office of being the next government today. Winston Peters, do you think that this uh, government arrangement and the set of policies that you have can bring about significant change to the economic structure of New Zealand? Is that, was that the difference uh, by the sounds of your speech? Well, our perception was that the people of this country, regardless of what a lot of people say, did want change, and uh, we've responded to that. And I believe in the affirmative, what you said, is going to happen. That's what we're going to put all our efforts into, to make sure it works, and we get the change that this country believes it needs. Did you call Jacinda Ardern before coming here? No. So she found out through your life? Well, the, this decision is owed first to the New Zealand people. They are after all the people have put us here, not politicians. The New Zealand voters. Mr. What, Peters, what role will you have in the coalition government? Can you tell us? Can I tell you? Um, well, let me just say that any role I've got uh, is in agreement with uh, the Prime Minister if I decided to do it. So you, you haven't so, agreed so on. Can you tell us what that was? Sorry. Can you tell us what that Well, was? if I choose to be the Deputy Prime Minister, then that was made clear to me. And if I choose, uh, chose to take certain portfolios, then we would discuss it with the Prime Minister, and I don't want to say which ones those are. What will this mean to exporters in particular who live in the regions? Well, I hope it means that we will start returning to an economy that understands we live or die by exporting, that exporting against GDP has been in decline and that we've got to turn it around. Unless we get far more people, far more successfully, businesses and enterprises and individuals offshore bringing money back to the family of New Zealand, then the slide we are currently on will continue. So just repeating that breaking news, well, New Zealand uh, First and Labour agree. will form the no, next New Zealand government. We're going to go to Bowen matter. House now. I think that's where you're standing by, Lloyd Burr. No, no, this is Parliament House. I've run from one side of the parliamentary precinct to the other and I'm now just outside uh, the Michael Joseph Savage Room, which is where Labor's been sitting down and watching uh, Winston Peters' press conference. And uh, about two minutes ago, the entire room just erupted, absolutely erupted, erupted with jubilation, with happiness, with cheers. And for the last 10 years, I have not heard sounds like that on Labor's floor. They are ecstatic. Jacinda Ardern, I had a bit of a peep through the window, is hugging people. There are tears 
People are absolutely over the moon that they, after nine years in opposition, will now be able to form a, form a government. Do we know if Jacinda Ardern is you going hear, to you, speak? You can hear them now. You can, they're clapping. Yes, yeah, so I'm sure Jacinda Ardern, will, Jacinda Ardern will make her way out soon uh, and head down. Uh, excuse the sweat because it's a big run from one side of Parliament to the other. Uh, I'm sure she'll come out and she'll make um, some kind of statement when she's ready. And uh, once she's had the sign off from the Greens, she'll jump in the Crown car and uh, head up to the Governor General where she'll ask Dame Patsy Reddy if she can form a government. Uh, and that's the next step, really, is um, once all those numbers are up and ready, boom, shake the room. She can form a government. Thank you very much, Lloyd. Now, we are going to go back to our political editor, Patrick Gower, who is at the Beehive Theatre and, of course, was at that press conference. Patrick, what does this mean in terms of the Greens? Yeah, well, that's uh, an interesting question and an important question, actually. Winston Peters saying there that he has formed the government in the first place with the New Zealand Labour Party and it is up to them to go and get the support of the Greens. So that actually hasn't been sorted out as yet, but it will probably be a fait accompli now. Winston Peters has changed the government. The Greens uh, will want to support that. They will obviously go to their membership and most likely get sign-off because it, if they don't sign it off, Jacinda Ardern won't be Prime Minister and Bill English uh, probably will be. The question is whether the Greens will be inside the coalition that Winston Peters has said he will form with the Labour Party. He will be in coalition with them. It could be that the Greens have to support that from outside, or there may be a way for them to come inside and have ministerial roles as well. Now, Winston Peters was asked in there, will he be Deputy Prime Minister of New Zealand? Will he be Jacinda Ardern's deputy? He has not apparently made a decision on that. He says Jacinda Ardern has offered him the deputy role. He's yet to make a decision on that. It sounds as if there are ministerial roles as well. Winston Peters did not want to say what they are. And it sounds also as if he will leave the policy agenda, of which there are going to be significant changes. Uh, he will leave that uh, perhaps to be announced with Jacinda Ardern as well. So that's got to be sorted out also. But incredible scenes, extraordinary. Winston Peters has changed the government of New Zealand and made Jacinda Ardern Prime Minister. Now, the next steps from here, uh, obviously Jacinda Ardern will have to go public at some point and perhaps uh, with Winston Peters now and also decide on what kind of roles um, he, ends up, he ends up taking up. I think the most interesting thing in there, if you're looking for a reason, Winston Peters spent a long time talking about the economy and, in fact, he attacked capitalism and said that it was a foe of the New Zealand people rather than a friend. Now, it has been a long time around this parliament when somebody in a government has attacked capitalism like that. I can tell you they do not attack capitalism around here. Even the Labour Party uh, doesn't talk like that. Winston Peters saying that is the reason uh, why he has gone for significant, significant change. He does not want the status quo anymore. He has gone for an agenda that brings change and will again make capitalism uh, the friend of the New Zealand people. Patrick, uh, we saw the delight a, uh, of the Labour Party uh, in their caucus room, but uh, I'm just wondering, have you had any reaction at this stage from National, who you know, up until about 10, 15 minutes ago was still in government, or still had a caretaker government at least? No, 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 nothing from National, although there was a bad vibe, I will say that now, um, a bad vibe running right throughout the day, and the signs did start to lean uh, towards the Labour Party throughout the day. But Bill English, he's been turfed out, got 44% in the election, he's gone, he's, he's, he has no chance of being Prime Minister. It will raise a question now of whether Bill English stays on as leader of the National Party or hands on to someone else to be the opposition leader. Bill English has been put into opposition by Winston Peters tonight. So think about that for a moment. Everyone else is gone. The National Party is gone. Jerry Brownlee, Stephen Joyce, all of those people who have occupied senior roles for so long, it's over for them now. Winston Peters has, Winston Peters has tipped them out of the beehive. The next thing to look for on the national side is a leadership challenge or Bill English's resignation. If his resignation doesn't come, look for someone to start, someone to start, to, start to shift him out of there. Patrick, thank you. That is News Hub Live at 6 for today, an incredibly historic day for this country. New Zealand First has announced a coalition with Labour. There'll be more analysis now on the project. The News Hub Late Team is here at 10.35. In the meantime, there's more news online at newshub.co.nz. I'm Mike McRoberts. And I'm Melissa Davies. And now it's the project.
Thank you. On a crazy, crazy day, we've been doing exactly the same thing as you've been doing. We've been watching that press conference. We've got an amazing crowd in here. Are you feeling good? <laughs> and we also have ex Māori MP Marama Fox. Great to have you here as well. Very in red. Yeah, Very in red. Did you know something that we didn't know about our new Prime Minister? Uh, I, did, I did have a couple of tickets on it. Yeah, so, but you, did, yeah, have, you did. did have a blue dress in the dressing room as well. Just yeah. in case. It might be true. <laughs> Watching that press conference unfold and with Winston's announcement that the New Zealand First will form a coalition with Labour, what do you make of all of that? Well, uh, you know what? The whole political landscape has just rolled over and spread itself out on a couple of deck chairs and, and is now having a cocktail in the sun. <laughs> like these guys, when they heard, the audience just erupted and uh, people wanted change. The majority of the country voted to change, even though it was a, a coalition of different parties. And congratulations to Jacinda. Prime Minister Jacinda. Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern. Uh, so we've got a few things planned between now and 7.30. First of all, if there's any more news from Wellington, we'll be heading there. Jacinda Ardern, it said, will be holding a press conference at some stage. So as soon as that happens, you'll go there as well. We're going to have expert reaction from Lisa Owen too. And we also know that uh, Doctor Who star, Desperate Housewives star John Barrowman is in the building. So we'll have a chance to catch up with him later in the programme as well. It has been just shy of a month, but we've got our government now. Now, from election night, Winston left everyone guessing, and though he turned out to be Labour's fairy godfather, few would likely call this a storybook ending. Once upon a time in the land of the long white cloud, an election campaign ran long and loud. Good King Bill had become a caretaker, while a prince not so charming was now the kingmaker. Malicious, malignant, and vicious in the extreme. The Red Princess, whose name was Jacinda, hoped the Prince would swipe right and go left, just like Tinder. To vote <laughs> against the status quo. Prince not so charming, he enjoyed this whole lark. This kingmaker in chief kept them all in the dark. You can ask all the questions you like, you're not going to get one answer right now. King Bill met him first. You know, negotiations went fine, thanks. Then Jacinda too. This has been a robust process. But without faraway votes, a decision wouldn't do. If you have 384,000, that's 15% of the vote, yet to be counted. That will change things in my view. James the Green got a seat, plus one more for the left. But the Prince said, nope, there's no court yet. Week after week, it was a few more sleeps. I didn't set the deadline. I told you a certain thing and you misinterpreted it. But then a secret board had us counting more sheep. If you're frustrated, I'm sorry about that. But then again, I'm more frustrated with your standard of reporting. In the end, the kingmaker went left, leaving some Kiwis singing and some others bereft. Surprised? Um, well, he kept us on the edge of our seats right to, to the very end and drew it right out, you know. Uh, I think the interesting thing about it is the he went with the party that didn't have the single biggest um, block of votes, and that is the first time he's done that in, in a coalition. So 96, 2005, he formed a government with the party that got the single biggest block of votes. Maybe this is a coming of age of MMP. People will realise it doesn't have to be that way. As long as you've got the numbers, by any means necessary, you can lead this country. We've been hearing some rumours today. Has he gone with the party who he thinks he can yank the most portfolios off? What, what, what will a cabinet look like with this new government? Yeah, and the interesting thing about that announcement is we don't have that detail yet. What we do know, and Marama noticed this straight away, he referred to, I've talked about it with the Prime Minister, which clearly means he's not the Prime Minister. So we'll be waiting to hear if he's got the Deputy Prime Minister's role, whether he gets a cabinet portfolio. There were things filtering out during the day that they were trying to get five cabinet portfolios. There's a lot of um, uh, experienced people in New Zealand First, even though they got that experience with other parties, Shane Jones, Ron Mark, we will be watching to see who gets those positions and also what kind of policy concessions he's managed to get because he talked there about um, capitalism, the economy, change. So what has he got that, what has he won that makes him think he can get the change that he's after? You know, with this um, coalition government, they're, uh, they're very new, unexperienced, 
quite a number of them. Do you think it's going to last the three years? Well, it's really interesting you mentioned that because in the most complicated coalition arrangement, which was the 2005 one with Labour, there was a cast of many in that, as you'd know, United Future, Winston Peters, um, the Progressives, uh, Jim Anderton's Progressives, and the, the Greens um, abstaining on confidence and supply. That was the most complicated arrangement. It lasted the term, whereas the simple arrangement with arguably the experienced Jim Bolger right. government, it blew apart. Mm, so right. you can't know, I suppose, is the answer to that. Here's a question. What happens to Bill English now? Well, it's funny you mention that because this will be a kick in the guts for Bill English. You know, you remember those jubilant pictures and Bill English is not one to have these big public displays of emotion, but on election night, he got up there. It was his sort of Rocky Balboa moment, <laughs> both hands in the air, yeah. You know, he thought he had won in essence. Well, he won the most votes, but he didn't get the ultimate prize. And in 2002, most catastrophic loss for the National Party, and Bill English delivered that loss as the leader, about 20% of the vote they got. And at the time, he described it as the worst moment in his political life. I wonder whether he will be reassessing if that <laughs> has been surpassed by this moment, where you win, but you don't yeah. win. Uh, thank you, Lisa. Uh, stand by. And by the way, just to remind you, if you're just tuning in, unlikely, uh, <laughs> but there's plenty going on in Wellington at the moment. So as soon as we have any more live pictures out of Wellington or another press conference or we hear from the new Prime Minister, Jacinda Ardern, we'll take that as soon as we get it. Now, it's fair to say it's been a trying time for our political journalists, right? The election, <laughs> the negotiations. So it's an understandable that just before the finish line today, our own Paddy Gower was completely defeated by a stationary poll. <laughs> There he goes, following Winston after lunch, trying to get a scoop. Well, it's coming in as we speak. Here's the small pole, and he's gone. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Paddy A, just can't get away from exciting polls. Oh. <laughs> and a quick thought to all those political journalists who've had a really long day. We woke up this morning, we knew today was going to be the day we'd find out, but we assumed it would be... Like, one o'clock, two o'clock, three o'clock. Chasing elevators every time the doors opened. Was yeah. it going to be them? That, that maintenance <laughs> man that was trolling, trolling all the journalists <laughs> standing there outside the lift. Trying to work out how to pronounce Vietnamese soup. That was a lot of the day for a lot of them. <laughs> One but, for breakfast is a bit much as was. well. No, Before thank you. All right, now there is a big part of New Zealand that is not going to be cheering for this result. Many of our farmers, you might remember the pre-election protest in Morrinsville where more than 500 of them turned up with attention grabbing signs and some dogged tractor driving. They were angry about what they saw as continued attacks on rural New Zealand while feeling as though they'd been painted as environmental vandals. Labour has promised a water levy of two cents per 1,000 litres to help clean up waterways and that is going to hit farmers in the back pocket. The organiser of that rally is Waikato Federated Farmers President Andrew McGiven and he joins us now. Andrew, you obviously did not vote for Jacinda Ardern. What was your first th thought when you heard Winston Peters say he'd partner with Labour? <laughs> Oh, I don't think that's an obvious conclusion of yours, Kanar, actually. But um, look, I'm a little surprised that Winston has uh, gone that way. But I think like the rest of New Zealand, I'm relieved and, uh, that we've got some surety and, and certainty uh, heading forward now. What are you worried about? Oh, I'm, I'm worried about a great many things and not necessarily all of it's government related. <laughs> Go on then, give us a couple. A <laughs> uh, new Labour-led coalition. What does this mean for farmers? Oh, I don't think, um, look, moving forward, I think we're, you know, as Federated Farmers, we want to try and work with whoever's in government and, and try and be listened to as much as we can. So, and I think the, new, the diversity of experience with this new coalition, I think we will, you know, it's not going to be all bad for farmers. I think we will we'll be able to work with the government and work ahead and, uh, and hopefully with, uh, you know, the new government, we'll be able to see the broader view of the environment, the, the, the social policies and the, and the economic policies, and, and we get a better outcome for rural communities in all of New Zealand. Mm. You want to ask him something, Marama? Uh, just, uh, you know that Winston was a great defender of the farmers in um, defending the, the rights of farmers to use water to grow our countries and our nation's food. Uh, do you worry that this water tax is going to hurt us? Is, uh, do you think it's going to be fair? Do you think Winston will let it go? 
I, I think I mean I think farmers are doing a great job in the environment at the moment, and I, I, I worry that a water levy, royalty tax, whatever you want to call it, will will have an adverse impact on the good work that farmers are doing around the water and and the environment. So that that's my primary concern at the moment. Andrew McGovern, thanks so much for your time tonight. Good evening. And thanks for coming on at short notice. It's been a short notice kind of a day. Stick with the project. Uh, we're going to be back in. We'll be heading to Patrick, Patrick Gower, actually, who's in Wellington. Since that press conference of Winston, he's been following development. So after the break, we'll go back to Parliament. Are we going to try and give away a car now? We're going to do that later. Okay, we're going to do it later. Something to look forward to. We'll see you soon for more projects. <laughs> How many dudes you know roll like this? How many dudes you know flow like this? Not many, if any, not many. <laughs> Winston. Winston. Peter. <laughs> Winston. Peter. 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 Kingmaker. Zealand Hurst. Zealand Hurst. Kingmaker. You expect to be Prime Minister? Questions get more idiotic. Each day. Oh, wow. Winston. 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 Okay. Kingmaker. Coalition. Co coalition meetings. Oh, I tell you, you've got to be smart. Ah, that's it. Thank heavens for that. Amen to that, Mr. Peter. really been Winston's day, right? And when you think about it, I guess this was a day for him to take because from tomorrow it's all about the new Prime Minister, Jacinda Ardern. And he certainly made the most of it, didn't he? That was, it was a long wait to that press conference. It was a speech. Uh, and we will cross to Parliament now where we've got News Hub political editor Patrick Gower. Uh, Patty, you have been there for all of this waiting, for all of this hoping, for those lift doors opening and closing. What was the mood like there today? Yeah, dramatic and I would say, um, without any doubt, one of the most extraordinary days in New Zealand politics, in New Zealand political history. You would have to go back to things like the 1984 snap election, the death of Norman Kirk, or even way back to things like Arnold Normeyer's black budget in 1967. Hmm. No one, no one had any idea which way Winston Peters was going to move today. He let, things, he let things hang, he put things to the brink, he put things to the test, and he has changed the government and installed a new Prime Minister into this country. Uh, it's obviously a day that I will never forget, and a day the likes of which I'll probably never see again. Hey, Patsuriki, it's Marama Fox here. Uh, listen, <laughs> kia, ora. Uh, kia ora. You know, you know uh, and you've seen it. Any guesses about... Uh, Deputy Prime Ministership or Ministerial Portfolios, what will Winston be going after? Well, he has been offered Deputy Prime Minister by Jacinda Ardern. He has said that. Uh, sounds as if he hasn't uh, yet decided. But uh, while you're there, Barama, it's some good news for Māori, in fact, actually. Uh, Winston Peters has said that the Māori seats are safe. There will be no referendum to get rid of the Māori seats. He has said the Māori seats are safe. Labour has won all of them, and he did not have enough leverage uh, to change those seats. So uh, some good news out there for Māori and Māori voters. I'm sure you'll agree with that, Marama. Yeah, absolutely. I think he's probably sure that he's got all of those Labour Māori MPs whipped, so he has no fear anymore. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Patrick, a really quick question. What's the schedule for the rest of the night? Are the fireworks over from the Beehive, or are you expecting more, just briefly? Yeah, well, we've got to see the uh, new Prime Minister, surely. She could wait till tomorrow or she could start to address the nation uh, tonight about just how she'll form that government. Remember, she needs to get the Greens involved. Also, the Greens will have that very important meeting tonight where their membership uh, will be asked to sign off on this. Also, we have to hear from the National Party. And a another extraordinary aspect of this is something we've never seen before in MMP. The biggest party and the biggest bloc has been put into opposition. Yeah. Uh, that is something that we haven't seen before. It'll take some New Zealanders some time to get their head around, uh, and we would expect perhaps to hear from Bill English tonight uh, about how he views Winston Peters' decision. Hey, Another point Patty, of interest, Jesse, before Sorry, we're I cut go... You. Yeah, go Winston... <laughs> Sorry, yes. we're going to cut you uh, off Winston there, Winston did not... <laughs> yes, <laughs> My fault. You've, done, you've absolutely owned it today, mate. Uh, well done. Patrick Gower, everyone. have the wonderful Marama Fox in the building. Are you sad that you are not there, that you're not in that hot seat at the moment? Uh, look, I went through all five stages of grief. 
I played out the Angry Birds all over TV the very next day after the election. I quickly moved through sorrow and melancholy and got on to hope and aspiration. I'm moving on, we're going to build houses. But I do feel, I do feel bad for Bill mm. because he ran a very good campaign. He got the biggest amount of the votes uh, on the night and he is actually a genuine, very nice guy, great father, and he'll be really filling it. He'll be really feeling it. Yeah, people won't realise this, but you have already moved on. You're not thinking about the next uh, term as MP, are you? No, not at all. I'm building houses, literally. We've started a new business and uh, we partnered with a development company. Um, we want to put houses onto Māori land. We want to get make sure that our we can force down and not wait for the trickle down um, so that we can employ whānau, we can put them in homes, and uh, I think that's going to be our future. Really quick question, what are you most interested in about over the next couple of days to find out? Um, who's going to be the Māori De Minister of Māori Development? Okay, very good. Okay, and we've still got an eye on Wellington too. News Hub has got you covered if there are any new developments out of the Beehive tonight. Plus we'll have the full bulletin breaking down all the news at 10.35pm. Please thank Marama Fox for joining us. <laughs> Thanks to Skoda too. And I've been looking forward to this all new Modern Family next on 3. See you tomorrow night. See ya.